For the first time in her short life, Aurora Rain Kialoha was feeling good about herself, hopeful for the future, superior to her peers and classmates. She was something called a spellcaster, and besides just finding out about her hidden gift, it already began consuming her. She snuck out of her room in the middle of the night to sit in her treehouse, practice her magic, and sink her teeth into Sage's hand-me-down tomes. For once, she wasn't bothered with having another hand-me-down. She learned everything there was to know from the Tome of Inferniate until the sun began to rise, knowing that her family would soon wake up to get ready for their days. Uncle Voldemar was still depressed about Zayden, making arrangements for his future funeral, while simultaneously stressing over his college applications. Shanna woke up to find Sage doing extra credit work, applauding him for his recent improvements. In fact, she she learned that he was now a B student, and though she didn't necessarily believe she should reward Sage for no longer flunking his classes, today was a special occasion. She was giving Sage the opportunity to ditch school today if he wanted, and there was a reason for that. The reason being that she needs Sage's help with Eva Shrivastova's quest and finding the door to the other realm. Shanna had stayed up practically all night thinking over everything, and all roads led back to nowhere. She had no idea what Eva was talking about. She felt like a terrible virtuoso. But Sage had grown as a spellcaster so quickly, recently ranking up to an adept. At this rate, he'll be a virtuoso by the time he graduates high school. Shanna needed his help with this quest. Sage would take absolutely any opportunity to skip school. With his mother's permission, he called out for the day, and Shanna got started on telling Sage everything he needed to know about Eva Shrivastava, the Keepers of Nature, and her unique quest of finding sprites. The first stop Shanna and Sage were heading to was the Realm of Magic. Michael Jackson's long-lost child was ready to get started. But the thing was, Shanna didn't know where to start. She didn't even know what she was searching for. Sage obviously didn't know either. So the two of them decided to basically search every inch of the Realm of Magic, hoping they'd find a clue somewhere. They looked at the abandoned buildings, various doors, even dug up some plants and wild frogs, because that's definitely going to help. Sage, after a few hours of nothing but dead ends, the duo decided to take a quick break for a little mischief, dueling one another at the grounds. But beforehand, Shanna made sure to give him some more magical training as a thank you for him helping her do this. Though, there was no need for Sage to be thanked, Magic is the thing he's most passionate about. He'll do anything to grow as a spellcaster. During their duel, it seemed like Sage had a bit of an advantage at first. But Shanna eventually overpowered him, leading to an embarrassing loss for the partial disappointment. Yeah, he was definitely going to feel that one in the morning. They then went through the portal and headed into Glimmerbrook to get a quick lunch. The both of them sitting at the bar. Or, Sage is all grown up, allowed to sit at the bar with his mummy by his side. He ordered some fries, while Shanna ordered herself a glass of wine. She needed some release after all of this. Who knew spellcasting could be so stressful? They discussed what was next. They'd do some walking around Glimmerbrook to try and find anything. And if not, head back home and start again tomorrow. Shanna was really starting to doubt herself. She felt like the door being here in Glimmerbrook or in the realm of magic was too obvious. Eva was obviously someone who valued hard work and intelligence. Maybe they were looking in all of the wrong spots to begin with. She had to face it. She was a bad spellcaster. What type of virtuoso would be so stumped at something like this? Sage tried to cheer his mom up. He could tell how much being in a coven and having spellcaster friends meant to her. He promised that they would figure it out before her today's were up. 
guaranteed. He'd love to be a part of this coven as well. Wow, everyone having either bags over their heads, Spider-Man masks on, or bunny ears on their heads really ruins the overall ambience of this place. Shanna really needed that pep talk from Sage. And, you know, maybe this was a learning lesson that she needed. Perhaps there are some things she overlooked in all those years prior to becoming a virtuoso. And maybe she needed to revisit her tomes for more research. They walked throughout Glimmerbrook, until it got late, heading back home to Evergreen Harbor defeated. Shanna was so upset that, after checking in on Voldemar, Aurora, and Oasis, she went straight to bed. Sage, however, was going for another sleepless night, sucking down a potion of plentiful needs before doing his homework. And as he sat in his living room, Sage managed to crack the code. It was so obvious that it was almost stupid. What are doors typically made out of? Wood. They are made of wood. Eva's coven revolves around nature, right? Then the door they're looking for probably isn't an actual door, but a tree. He felt so dumb for not thinking of it earlier. Trees have been used as portals to other dimensions in media and literature countless times. Who's to say that couldn't apply to real life? Once Shanna woke up, he ran to her with quickness, excited to tell her he cracked the code. He found her relieving her stress, making heaps of unnecessary potions. Once she was done, he told her everything. They weren't looking for a door, they were looking for a tree. Shanna didn't waste any time. She checked in on Voldemar, Aurora, and Oasis, and they were on their way. Since it was the weekend, there was no need for Sage to skip school again. They could search all day and all night if they needed to, but not without taking another potion of plentiful needs. Shanna believed in Sage and his prowess, but she was really hoping he wasn't wrong about this. Sage knew in his heart that he wasn't. It was actually a real weird feeling. It was almost overwhelming. Shanna trusted her son. They would make their way throughout all the towns with high supernatural presence, but Shanna had one rule, just one rule for Sage. She pointed at Eva's house in the distance. She told him not to get too close. She has some freaky powers and can sense a spellcaster's presence. She was able to tell Shanna was a spellcaster despite the two of them never meeting. Eva can't know Sage is involved in this. Sage agreed to Shanna's terms. Not this fucking nerd getting on his bicycle. You can literally teleport now, bro. Oh. I stand corrected, the keeler has searched left and right, high and low, up and down, side to side, checking on every tree possible. Unlike his mother, Sage felt a sensation tingle through him every time he looked at all the different trees. It better not be the sensation I'm thinking of. No, it wasn't that. He could tell just by looking at them that it wasn't the one they were looking for. There was no magical presence, no supernatural energy coming off them. This was so weird. He'd never felt anything like this before in his entire life. And of course, Sage hadn't listened to his mother. Though Eva Loki scared Sage, he had to go see what her house looked like up close. Keeping a healthy distance, he felt an odd feeling the closer he walked. Once he was done examining all the trees, he sat at a bench nearby and waited for his mother. She hadn't found anything either, meaning it was time to move on to the next town. And now, they were going to have to be very careful. They were going into Moonwood Mill. Sage felt so nostalgic being back in his hometown. Wasn't that his childhood home, where his grandfather Christopher lives? Can they stop for a visit? Shanna sighed. She knew one day she was going to have this talk with Sage out of all her children. He probably remembered his grandfather Chris the most, as much as she loved Chris. There was a reason why they hadn't had any contact with him in a really long time. She didn't want to say too much, because it was something that affected Autumn so much, and felt like it was something she should talk about with him, not her. Maybe Sage was old enough to finally know everything about the Volkovs, but Shanna wasn't going to be the one to tell him. She was hoping to reunite Chris and Autumn soon, and she had a great idea how. For now, she told him to steer clear a view of the house. They were visiting another tree, the Moonwood Collective Tree, steering clear of Christopher by going to his werewolf pack's hangout. Smart girl, Shanna. Smart girl, 
The tree led to nowhere. The only magical thing inside of it was leftover food the pack mates left behind, so they headed up to Moonwood Cliff and scoured from up above. They gave themselves a moment or two to take in the gorgeous view before heading to the next town, Willow Creek. Shanna had no idea why Sage felt the need to visit Willow Creek of all places. What was so magical about the boring town? Sage knew he was going to sound crazy saying this to Shanna, but as they were traveling in the direction of Willow Creek, Sage felt this weird feeling like they were onto something. He's felt it ever since he connected the dots about the door. Had she ever felt something like that? Shanna said she hadn't, but she knew who had Eva. Maybe Sage is a more talented spellcaster than she thought. Her Simusi really did that. She followed Sage, letting him take charge, until they stumbled upon this very, very odd looking tree in between the manufactured houses. Sage knew the moment he looked at it. This was it. This was the door. I mean, look at it. It's covered with mushrooms and colorful stems. Its energy was intoxicating. Did she feel that? No, she didn't, and she hated that she couldn't. So, now what? He was sure they found it. How do they actually open it? He pondered as his mother praised him. He really was turning into an amazing spellcaster. Who would have thought her teenage son would be more powerful than she was? Well, he was born one. He joked with her. This was going to sound silly. But Sage thought of something to get the portal to reveal itself. Eva's whole belief system revolves around loving and respecting nature, right? Well, how do you make someone, or in this case, some Something open up to you. You show them love. Perhaps a little talking, a little watering, a little praising will do the trick. So the both of them started talking to the tree, watering the tree, complimenting the tree's leaves, looking like to fucking idiots to everyone who passed by until Sage saw it open. Ho, Lee, shit. Shanna was confused. She didn't see a single thing. Where did he see an opening? What did she mean where did he see it? It was right there. Right where? Sage told her to keep talking to it. He was going to go inside. And that's when Shanna's motherly instincts showed themselves. Fuck no. He wasn't going inside first. They don't know what's in there. He's still her child, after all. So, she kept on talking, and watering, and complimenting, until she finally saw the portal open as well. She couldn't believe it. Her son solved Eva's quest. She had never been so proud of her son before. They were running out of time. So Shanna told Sage to stay back as she examines the portal and lets him know that it's safe to enter. It was spooky, swampy, dark, her heart dropped to her stomach as she made her way through and that's when Sage noticed that the tree was glowing. There was something on the other side and Shanna had found that something all right. Shanna's jaw dropped down to her but fairies exist and Sage thought the same thing once he entered the portal. Seems like the fairies were shocked to see her too. Sage had so many questions. Werewolves, spellcasters, and now fairies exist. What's next? Momaids, aliens, vampires. Wow, Shanna thought. They really need to have the talk about Aunt Nicole with Sage. She told Sage to keep his distance while she talks with the fairies. No talking to strangers. Sage, can you handle that ounce of self-discipline? To Shanna's surprise, one of the fairies approached her first, introducing himself. His name is Cedric, and he is the ethereal guardian of the Sylvan Glade, the safe haven of the fairy occult. He is responsible for keeping all fairies safe and guiding them through their magical journey. Shanna then introduced herself and her son Sage. They were spellcasters on a mission to hunt down some sprites. Cedric told them he could sense a spellcaster from a mile away. Not to worry, fairies are friends of the spellcasting community, and they welcomed them to the Sylvan Glade with open arms. 
items, unlike some others. Anyways, Cedric told them to enjoy this bright collecting mission, and to let him, or any of the fairies, know if they need any help. She went ahead and started collecting the 50 sprites she needed. Sage taking it upon himself to make some fairy friends. He greeted an adult fairy named Annabel. She seemed really friendly, and was super interested in the spellcaster standing before her very eyes. They got to chatting, comparing powers, talking about spells, and after some time, Annabel was curious if Sage wanted to duel with her, with these new powers of his emerging, one similar to Eva's. He was super confident he could take a fairy down. That was until Annabel started pulling moves on him like this. <laughs> And before he got his ass handed to him. So much confidence, so little attractiveness. That's okay, because Sage had fun, and that was all that matters. He was so drawn to the Sylvan Glade. And as he mindlessly stared into the various rivers and streams, he was approached by his mother Shanna, telling him it was finally time to go back home. She had collected all 50 sprites for Eva. 